Okay, so in this problem we're told, if a curve with radius 85 meters is properly banked for a car traveling 65 kilometers per hour, what must be the coefficient of static friction for a car not to skid when traveling 95 kilometers per hour? So the first thing we have here is our car. And so we know it's going to be on an angle like this, some banked angle theta, which we don't know yet. And we know, imagine it's traveling circular, right? But the car is basically traveling towards us, you have to imagine. So in this case, the car is traveling straight at us through the screen, and it's going to be going in a circle. And so what we're trying to find is the coefficient of static friction. Uh, so the, the car doesn't skid when its velocity is 95 kilometers per hour. So that's what we're trying to find. And the first thing we have to do in order to solve this is find the, the, or the angle theta at which uh, this car, right? So basically this angle theta. And so the way we do it is by using this formula right here. And so if you look in your textbook, uh, it should be example 515. Uh, it'll give you the formula for a uh, angle if it is banked, right? So in this case, properly banked. So this is the angle if something's properly banked for some specific speed and radius. So if we know uh, the speed that it's banked at, right, for, right, and it says it's banked for a car traveling 65 kilometers per hour. So we know the velocity we're going to plug in here is 65. And then we know the radius of our track here is uh, 85 kilometers per hour. So uh, in order to solve for theta, we just got to plug these values in. Uh, notice, though, your velocity has to be in meters per second. So the first thing we want to do is convert that. So as I said before, it's designed for 65 kilometers per hour. So 65 kilometers per hour. You should know that 1,000 uh, meters is 1 kilometer. So that cancels that. And then to convert it into hours, or sorry, seconds, uh, we know 1 hour is 60 seconds. Or sorry, 1 hour is 60 minutes. And then 1 minute is 60 seconds. So notice the hours will cancel and then the minutes. And so cool, now we just perform this. So 65 times 1,000 divided by 60 divided by 60. And you will get 18.056. Uh, the units are going to be meters per second. Uh, and now we have the velocity at which this is banked for. So we can plug it in. So uh, keep in mind we have the arc tangent of 18.056 squared divided by the radius, which they tell us is 85 meters times G, which is acceleration due to gravity. It's just a constant 9.8 meters per second squared. And yeah, so just go ahead and do this now. So I'm going to use the exact, exact value in my calculator uh, when plugging this in. So our answers might be a little different, uh, but make sure you do this correctly and you will get our angle theta is equal to 21 point three seven degrees so yeah 21.373 uh so so this is our angle theta here so if we look on our thing right here let's label it cool so now that we have that um what we're going to want to do is kind of understand what's going on here so we're gonna draw the free body diagram of what's acting on this. Uh, but the first thing you need to understand is uh, the centripetal force and the way the acceleration is gonna point uh, in this problem. So uh, the centripetal force is gonna point inwards to the track like this, right? And it's gonna be basically like this towards the center of the circle. And so you can just call this A sub C because really this is your centripetal acceleration uh, or it's the force. And what we want to understand is the components of it. So uh, whenever you're doing a problem like this on an angle, it's really important to understand and label everything relative to two axes, right? So you have the x-axis, which you generally denote along your curve like this. So I'll denote that as the x. And then your y-axis is just perpendicular to this line. Uh, you can draw it up like this. But just keep in mind, whenever I refer to the x, I'm talking about everything along this way, and the y is along this way. And so notice our centripetal acceleration is in neither. It's uh, a not, it's, it's like off in the X and Y. So we want to find the X and Y components of it, which would be this way, like this. 
this would be your a sub c of x so the centripetal acceleration in the x direction and then your y would just be like this so perpendicular to it so a sub c of y and so uh, that's really important to understand you're going to need it for later um, but now that we have it like this what we want to do is actually find out what these components or their values are so you should know the formula for centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius okay um, and so uh, what we want to do is get the velocity in terms of this or sorry we want to get the acceleration uh, in terms of the velocity um, but their x component so we want to find basically a sub c of x and a sub c of y and you'll see why later on in the problem but it's it's really useful to do it now so how do we do that so uh, basically we need to find uh, what the components are so a sub c of x is going to be equal to a sub c multiplied by the cosine of theta and then a sub c of y is a sub c times the sine of theta so these are your two formulas uh, the way you can see that is this angle theta right here is the same as this angle theta right here therefore if we wanted to use sine uh, we know the sine let me actually just show you the sine of an angle sine is opposite over hypotenuse therefore a sub c of y over a sub c multiplying both sides you would get a sub c of y is uh, a sub c times the sine of theta and then you would just do the same thing for cos but notice cos is adjacent over hypotenuse so uh, that's how we get it cos for a sub c of x and uh, that for the other one uh, now what I want to show you is so notice a sub c of x is or this is a sub c right so you have uh, a sub c of x is equal to a sub c which is this v squared over r multiplied by the cosine of theta and so this is what we're trying to find and then a sub c of y is once again v squared over r but times the sine of theta so all we did here was just substitute uh, a sub c into both of these and so now we have our x and y components of our centripetal acceleration and uh, what we're going to want to do now is just draw the free body diagram of what's actually going on here so once again just like we did here where we split it up into the x and y components you're going to want to do that for this too so notice that gravity points straight down right here like this mg so that's what the force due to gravity is it's mg and then your y component would be like this and your x component would be like this now um this is your angle theta but you need to know that this is equal to mg sine of theta right just like here it's on the opposite side so it's mg sine of theta and then this is mg cosine of theta so your y component we could call it just just make sure you know this is the y component this is the x component uh, that's because this is along the x and this is along the y so all we did was basically just split mg into its components so we've got that uh, and then we have the normal force which points it directly upwards like so so like this right perpendicular to the place it's on and then the force of friction is going to act this way right it's going to stop it from sliding so it's going to right we're going to have this force pulling us in and this force is going to be uh, going out like that stopping us from sliding so when we go around this corner like this and so those are all the forces that are going to be acting on it and so what we're going to want to do now is just sum the forces along each direction so we say some of the forces in the x equal and so in this case since we're going in a circle like this it's going to be equal to m a c of x right because notice we're in the x direction so we have to do the acceleration in the x and this is why we found a sub c of x so you'll see why we use it in a second um, but now we just want to sum the forces in the x and so uh, you just add up the forces a lot acting on the x which in this case are the force of friction and our x component of our gravity so generally the way i like to denote it if it's to the right it's positive if if it's to the left it's negative if it's down it's negative if it's up it's positive so notice our gravity is pointing this way so it's positive so we have mg sine of theta here and then the force of friction is also in the x but it acts the opposite way so this would be negative because it's to the left notice acceleration isn't a force here so we don't have to include that and uh yeah so 
that's for the sum of the forces in the x. Now let's do the y, where it's going to be m a c of y. And so you're using a centripetal acceleration here because we're going in a circle like this. Um, but yeah, so you have m a c of y is equal to, now we sum them in the y. So we have f sub n going upwards in the y, therefore it's positive, and then our y component of gravity. And so we have mg multiplied by the cosine of theta here. And so notice we have two formulas here, uh, one for mc a of a, or mac of x and mac of y, uh, and just some of the forces in the x and y. So now that we have these two formulas, I want to explain why we actually did this. So notice the force of friction is equal to mu sub s times f sub n, since we're dealing with a static problem here in this case. So uh, this uh, basically tells you if we can find the ratio of the force of friction divided by the normal force, we get mu sub s, right? So all I did was divide both sides by the normal force. So if we can figure out this ratio, we will get our answer. So the reason we did these equations is, or what I'm going to do in this case is uh, basically divide our force of friction in this equation by the normal force one, and then that'll give us our answer. So we want to get both of these formulas in terms of f sub n and the force of friction. So go ahead, going ahead and do that, we have the force of friction equals, uh, I'm just going to move this to the other side and then minus this. So mg sine of theta minus mac of x. And then for f sub n, you can just move this to the other side. So mg cos of theta. Uh, and then this one's going to be plus mac of y. And so this is the whole reason why we actually went ahead and solved for uh, this in terms of these, because uh, our velocity is going to be a certain value, right? So they tell us we're traveling at a certain speed, which is 95 kilometers per hour. So that's the velocity we're going to plug in. So keep in mind, we have mg sine. I'm just going to divide them now. Minus m. And then I'm going to plug in uh, a c of x and a c of y. So you have v squared cosine of theta divided by r. Right, so keep in mind this is the force of friction divided by the normal force. Just dividing these two formulas, but I'm plugging in v. So mg cos of theta minus m. Uh, and this is this one's v, v squared sine of theta. Sorry about this in the way. Let me just go like that. But hopefully that makes sense. So all we did was take our formula and divide it like this so we can get our answer. And so keep in mind, this one's actually plus. I wrote minus there. Uh, but yeah. And so when you divide these, let's go ahead and do that. So you're going to plug in your values. Let me move down here a bit. So we have the mass, right? It'll, it has a mass in every term, right? Therefore, we can just basically ignore it. And so you just want to plug in all your other values. So our velocity is going to be 95 kilometers per hour. But keep in mind, you want to put it in meters per second when you do this. Uh, and then your thetas, you're just going to plug in, right? We found that earlier. Uh, and then you know the radius, which is 85, 85 uh, meters. So you basically know every value, and it's just a matter of plugging it in now. So when you go ahead and do this, I'll show you what we get. Uh, you will get mu sub s, right? Because remember, this ratio is uh, what we're solving for. So when you do this, you're going to get an answer that is equal to 0.33. So 0.33, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. Uh, but yeah, so this is your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful. And so I want to just add on that when you do this, you're actually going to get a negative value. So when you plug this in, you're going to get negative uh, 0.33. And so the thing you have to keep in mind, though, is uh, we're just making it a positive value, right? So the negative doesn't actually change anything. It just tells us that this ratio, right, when we use these numbers was negative. But we're just looking for the actual ratio of it, which is just a still 0.33. The negative uh, just doesn't change anything, right? Because we just want the ratio. We don't really care about the number. And uh, yeah, so just keep in mind that your answer is uh, just 0.33 here. Obviously, this doesn't have units. 
Uh, and yeah, so just a quick rundown of what we did here. Uh, we knew we had to find the angle theta first for this being banked at a certain speed. Uh, and then all we did was uh, draw the free body diagram. And then uh, right, we had to find the acceleration in the x and y to actually be able to plug it into these formulas. So when we did the ratio, uh, we could actually solve because we knew the velocity. So that's why we did that. And uh, yeah, so if you plug in all these numbers, you should get 0.33. Uh, I got 0.335, but the answer is 0.33. Uh, if you round a little bit, you might get a little off, but essentially this is going to be your answer here. And uh, yeah, so this is going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.